the kind of common story that happens in the pancreatic space, lots of scans, in, uh, some signs that the tail was kind of um, inflamed, led to an endoscopic ultrasound. Um, uh, they saw some lesions there, biopsy was inconclusive, and with an inconclusive biopsy, they wouldn't do anything. And, um, and they did another test called uh, ACGH, um, which can use probabilistic matching on the on the DNA to uh, give a view in terms of what the cancer was, and it came up with pancreatic adenoid carcinoma. So I had lesions, I had elevated tumor markers, I had pains where my pancreas was, and I had pretty much good evidence to suggest I had early stage cancer, but the doctor wouldn't treat me. So because there was no confirmed biopsy, I was kind of left to fend for myself um, without conventional treatment. And I was pretty angry at the conventional system for that at the time, not understanding how it worked. So I created a Facebook group to kind of bring patients together um, to try and capture what they were doing and see if it worked. Uh, so I did my first trial was um, 100 pancreatic and bile duct patients. That was the cancer I had. And it was also a pretty good one to start with because the average stage four pancreatic patient lives between seven and 11 months. So you, you get a turnaround fairly quickly on what's working and what's not. So I spent uh, three years looking at 100 patients um and captured every single bit of detail from from what protocol they were doing so you know what supplements they're taking what dosage what time of day um and at the time i was kind of hoping like a lot of people do that there was some magic magical substance out there that would have the answer or some magical protocol that would have the answer um, but what i found after about three years of studying the data is it wasn't so much the specifics that mattered. It was the general approach that made the big difference. Um, so, I mean, these were, these were the things we, we found that stood out. So large protocols, we call them the 30 plus early adoption of the protocols. So if people left it, if people didn't find out about integrative oncology until like they've already got resistance. It didn't work. So the, it, it seemed to be that, that a lot of these anti-cancer approaches that people talk about were really more prolonging the, the life of the primary treatment. Now, this, this, this is a specific pancreatic trial I ran. I think for prostate, it would probably be a di bit different because you've got weight and watch as an option. And I think, you know, the dynamics are slightly different for prostate. Um, but there was a massive correlation um, with those um, going to an experimental clinic early on. So we had four complete responses, which is very rare in pancreatic. For those that had... Uh, bravery effectively to go and fly from their country to a top clinic um, places like Cleef, which has shut down he spent his life studying immunotherapy uh, veritas clinic he's got this in malaysia they're typically in the unregulated areas where people would need to fly to and spend a fair amount of time but if they did it early they were, we were seeing uh, like 80 percent of the complete responses were people who'd left uh, in their first line or prior to their first line of treatment and uh, we're getting to uh, NED with pancreatic, which is incredibly rare. Uh, and other things that stood out, um, there was a clear correlation of people who really wanted to live, um, particularly mothers of young children. Uh, and you'd see the kind of determination in, in uh, the patients. Um, and, you know, this is very difficult with cancer. You, you, it's very evident. And, and every integrative doctor I speak to talks about the uh, the apparent impact of someone's emotions on their outcomes. Um, and this is something I studied later on. Um, and also because the importance of staying on standard of care seems so important, those that limited the side effects of the high dose chemo also did better. Um, one of the main reasons um, people have to stop treatment in uh, pancreatic cancer is because of the uh, dose limiting tox toxicities of the chemo so those that manage that were doing were doing better and, and unfortunately because of the 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 number that went to these clinics a lot of them did spend a lot of money these clinics are expensive 